Number 21. You fly 32 kilometers in a straight line in still air in the direction 35 degrees south of west. A. Find the distances you would have to fly uh, straight south and then straight west to arrive at the same point. Okay, so let's first draw a set of axes. All right, so let's draw an, a y-axis and an x-axis, and let's draw in the vector. And they're saying that uh, the direction in which we're traveling is 35 degrees south of west. So here's west, here's south, and now we're going to be 35 degrees south of west. Yeah, that looks like 45, right? It's going to be a little less than that. Yeah, that looks good. So 35 degrees would be the angle in here. Okay, and what they want us to find now, it says find the distances, find the distances, excuse me, that you would have to fly straight south. Okay, so it looks like we would have to, in order to end up in this location over here, it looks like we would have to fly straight south this distance. Right, let's call that negative y, because we moved in the negative y direction. And then we would have to then have traveled west from that point, right? Let's call that negative x, because that's moving in the negative x direction. So this is what we want to find. Now, okay, so how do we do this? Well, we can do this in one uh, particular way. We have a triangle. The only thing, though, about the triangle is we don't know um, the angle inside of that triangle. But we do know that the 35 degree angle over there, right, right here, is essentially, well, we do know that this overall angle here is 90. And if part of that angle is 35, what would be the missing component? Obviously, right? It would be 90 minus 35. So let's just simply plug that in. So 90 minus 35 comes out to be 55. So the angle in here is 55. Okay, great. Now also remember uh, that the magnitude of this vector here in red, they told us was 32. Okay, so now we can start solving for some stuff. So let's first take a look at x. So to solve for x, right, I know the hypotenuse of 32, I know this angle of 55, and I want to find the side opposite of that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use sine. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. I have the formulas in the upper right-hand corner if you're uh, unfamiliar with them. So you can check that out. So sine of 55 will equal negative x over 32. Negative x will equal now. So take out your calculator, do sine 55 times 32. So we get 26 and we'll do two sig figs, so 26. And then you gotta move the negative sign over, right? So x is equal to a negative 20, oop, hold on one second. Negative 26 um, kilometers, because we're dealing in kilometers. Great. So that is equivalent to the west, right? That's how far you'd have to travel west. Okay, now let's take a look at how far you'd have to travel south or in the negative y direction. You know the hypotenuse, you know this angle, and we're looking for the side adjacent to that angle. Therefore, it would be now cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of 55 would be equal to negative y over 32. Negative y would equal, so cosine of 55 times 32, works out to be 18, so that equals 18, and then y would then equal negative 18. So this would be the direction you'd have to travel south. Okay, so that takes care of letter A. It's fairly straightforward. Now it says for part B, so let's go back to the problem. So part B, Find the distances you would have to fly first in a direction of 45 degrees south of west and then in a direction 45 degrees west of north. And they give us a little hint here. So these are the components of the displacement along a different set of axes, one rotated 45 degrees. Okay, well, rotated how? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Which direction? They don't mention, but it is rotated counterclockwise. Okay, so let's draw it out. So this is, uh, so we did letter A over here. Let me just write that. And now we're gonna be looking at letter B. So let's just redraw the axes. We have Y, I'll draw them a little bigger this time, we have X. And now let's plug in our resultant vector. 
right? This vector right here that we found before. And I'll just draw a little arrow. Okay, so now they want to know, find the distances you find the distances you would have to fly first in a direction 45 degrees south of west. So where is that? Well, here's the west direction, here's the south direction. So they're asking us something in here, right? 45 degrees south of west. Okay, and then they're saying after you get all the way out here, right? Now we would have to then uh, travel 45 degrees west of north. So if I had a little coordinate system here, right, here's north, here's west, what's 45 degrees west of north? It would be about right in here, right? That'd be 45 degrees west of north. So it almost looks like here's my kind of coordinate system, right? Do you see that angle that it creates? It creates an angle like this, right? Now I know the lines are all messy, but I hope you followed that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some nice axes, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create an axis that's about 45 degrees. Bear with me, this might take an attempt or two. Wow, that's actually pretty good. All right, let's see if I can get lucky again. Mm, not so lucky. That's better. Okay, that looks actually pretty good. So these are my axes. These are the axes that are now rotated 45 degrees. And rotated how? Well, you could have also said rotated clockwise. It actually wouldn't have made a difference. Uh, but I'm looking at it in terms of rotating it counterclockwise. You can look at it as rotated clockwise. It really doesn't matter. That's why they didn't tell us. So from this axis to this axis, if I call this my, uh, my y-axis here, then this is in the positive, right? This is also the positive uh, y-axis over there. And if this was my x-axis originally, then this is now my positive x-axis now. Okay, great. So now I think we're gonna start to see how we're gonna put this together. So here's the value of 35 degrees, right? 35 degrees in there. Now let's draw our little triangle. So focus on the yellow axes, okay? Those are my new set of axes. So here's my resultant, okay? Now how do I draw the, the components of that resultant? Well, this would be the X component of that resultant, right out to there. And I'll draw it a little neater. I'm becoming a little OCD one more time. Oh, that got worse last time, I promise. Okay, that's good enough. So there's my x component, right? So this would be the negative x value. And then now I'd have to go up, right? So let's draw that in. So now I'd have to go up here. Okay, perfect. And now that would be, if you're looking at, right, you might have to just turn your head like I'm doing. Uh, that would be now a positive y value because we're going above uh, the, the x-axis. Here's the 90 degree angle. Now here's the question, guys. What is this angle in here? Well, remember, I know that the angle in here, this whole thing is 45, because I had to rotate the axes 45 degrees. So if that whole thing's 45, and this part of that whole thing is 45, excuse me, and, <laughs> and this part of that whole thing is 35, that would mean the little piece in here should be what? 10, that's 10 degrees. Great, now we know the magnitude of the red vector, right? The red vector they told us before was 32 kilometers. Okay, great. So now let's solve for the X component. How do we do that? We know the hypotenuse of the triangle. We know this angle and we're looking for the angle, excuse me, we're looking for the side adjacent to that angle. Therefore, we're gonna be using cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse Cosine of 10 degrees would now be equal to, it's really a negative x because we're out on the left, divided by 32. So negative x will equal, so do cosine of 10 times 32. And it comes out to about 32. Uh, yeah, it should only be, no, it's actually gonna be three sig figs because this is really 32.0. Should have been using three sig figs over here too, but I got a little sloppy there. But it's weird, and, and as you go throughout the class, they won't care about significant figures anymore. They only care in like the first chapter or two. 
So uh, let's just round to three sig figs here. So this should be 31.5 and then just carry the X on over. So it'd be negative 31.5. Great, so that's the X component. And now let's do the same for the Y component here. Remember, you know the hypotenuse, you know this angle, and now we're looking for the side opposite of that angle. Therefore, that's a sine calculation. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Sine of 10 will equal Y over 32. So Y will now be, let's just calculate it, sine of 10 times 32. It comes out to 5.56. So 5.56, uh, these are both kilometers, right? Kilometers. And that would now be the final answer. So that sounds cool. Which one is less? Which path is less? If you were to take, if you were to do part A or part B, how would you figure that out? Right? You would, all you'd have to do is add up your X value and your Y value. You add those together, right, for part A. And then you would add B together, the X value for B and this Y value for B. And then you'd compare. All right? So it appears that the second one should be shorter. Okay, if you add them together, I'm just looking at the numbers. They should definitely, it should, uh, it should come out to be shorter. All right. So guys, thanks for checking out the video. I hope this helped. And uh, please remember to subscribe. All right. And I'll see you in the, uh, I'll see you in the next question.